Okay, we're going to continue working with functions right now, and that formal definition of a function. So remember, what we've been working on is, well, the formal definition of a function. Every input has exactly one output. All right, so now we're going to go back to when we were writing some equations, okay? Understand, again, a lot of what we do isn't brand new stuff. Um, we just kind of keep adding on to it, okay? So it says it takes Josephine 34 minutes to complete her homework and uh, of 10 problems. If we assume that she works at a constant rate. Okay, so now there's a constant. Functions can work with constants. They just don't have to. We can describe the situation using a function. Write the two variable linear equation. That's directions you see before. So remember, we're, you know, when we write a two variable equation, um, we have to write the ratio. And when we write a ratio or a rate, when we write a rate, we put time on the bottom. So it's 34 minutes to complete 10 problems. So I'm going to say she does 10 problems per 34 minutes. And then remember, I set that equal to y over x. Okay? And then do our cross products. And we get 34 times y equals, this is just the cross products property, 10 times x. Okay? So now, always solve for y. So we always put the um, minutes on the bottom, right? It's our independent variable. And if I divide both sides by 34, we got a couple options here. 34 divided by 34, it's just 1y. Um, you could leave this as 10 thirty-fourths x. Or if you reduce it, I guess you could say y equals, divide both by 2, 5 seventeenths x. Or if you did a decimal, you're going to get some kind of random decimal there. But um, you could approximate it as 0 0.294. I think you're going to get a random decimal. I guess I should check that, right? Uh, calculator. There it is. Okay, um, 5 divided by 17. Yep, I was right. You get a random decimal. Okay, so here's our rule, our function, right? So we have, I'm going to use this one, okay? You can use the fraction ones, but I'm guessing you probably will. Notice we have our x values here and our y values here. These are inputs. We're going to input our x values. That's why we always solve for y, because our y values are dependent on um, what our inputs are. So the first one's already been done, right? So they took a five and they plugged it in here for X, okay? And so then we do that with 10 and we would just go 0 0.294 times 10. And we get 4.41. Nope, we don't. I am jumping ahead, sorry. Let's try that again. We get 2.94. Yeah, that didn't even make sense, did it? And then if we go 15, and put input a 15 here, we get 4.41. If we input a 20, we get 5.88. If we input a 25, we get 7.35. Okay? So again, we've done all of this before. We wrote the equation. We're plugging numbers in. We can handle that. Now it says after five minutes... She was able to complete 1.475 problems, which really doesn't make sense. I mean, it makes sense, but it says here she, can, she completed one problem and about half of the next. So it says use the formula from part B, this right here. To complete the number of problems when x equals negative 7. All right, so I'm going to take negative 7 and I'm going to plug it in here. And my y is going to equal 0 0.294 times negative 7. And then type that into a calculator. Okay, my calculator does not do negatives. Maybe somewhere on here. But anyway, so I'm going to do times it by 7, 2.058, but I know a positive times a negative is going to be negative. That's negative 7 there. So y is going to equal negative um, 2.058. Okay. So why is our number of problems? Does it make sense for us to have a negative number of problems? 
Well, let's think about it. X is a number of time. Does it make sense to have a negative time? No. So um, we're going to just say no. It does say to explain. So I'm going to say negative 7 minutes to complete. Negative 2.058 problems. Doesn't make sense. That's why you always want to pull that real life factor in there. There was nothing wrong with this problem. We substitute a number in and got an answer. But according to talking about time, what it takes to do a problem and the number of problems completed, it just doesn't make sense. All right. For this problem, we assume that Josephine worked at a constant rate. So I want you to think of when you do your homework, okay? Whether in my class, somebody else's class, doesn't matter. Do you think it's a reasonable assumption that we work at a constant rate? That you are constantly, and when we say rate, we're doing numbers from, or problems per minute. So if we have a constant rate, we have the same number of problems per minute. Do problems ever take you longer or shorter? Yeah. Okay, so do you think it's a reasonable assumption? No. Okay, we don't necessarily always take 1.47 minutes per problem. So we're just going to say no. Each problem might take a different amount of time. Okay, so I hope you realize that when we're dealing with functions here, we kind of work with them the same way we've been working with different problems. Um, but we can identify things that are, are functions now by having that definition. Each input has exactly one output.